I'm here in my bathroom. Uh, why not just go over some of the things that I'm really loving that just really makes me look polished. I don't like heavy makeup around here and I know a lot of you don't either. So I'm going to get into it. What I've been loving, what I've been using, what I recommend to a lot of my clients when we are on one-on-one beauty coaching call. So the first thing, I've got my little Grape and Stella eye mask. These are the ener energizing eye masks. I got these off of Amazon and they actually well priced to keep the pack in the bridge and then i just pop them underneath when i'm just wanting a little pick me up before i put makeup on it kind of firms cools just feels great i'll have everything linked in the description of this video but these are very well priced the ingredients are actually fantastic they're they're vegetable proteins there's um, amino acids in it glycerin to hold trap and protect the moisture levels of the skin it's just really nice so I'm just going to peel these boys off. I am loving all products Ilia these days. I-L-I-A, Ilia. Clean ingredients, performance-driven skincare and makeup that's got such wonderful skincare ingredients in it that's going to nurture and protect your skin. Not affiliated. I just really love these products. I wanted something that would like help keep my makeup on but not heavy like a silicone primer. I don't like silicone primers. I don't really recommend silicone primers. And this True Radiant Fermi Serum Primer is silicone free and it literally feels like straight up skincare. So it's got aloe, beta, glucan. It allows your makeup to grip nicely on the skin without silicone. So many people don't like makeup primers precisely because they have silicone in them. Silicone, especially if you are a combination to on the oilier side, silicone as it wears throughout the day can feel very heavy and almost suffocating. And this is a beautiful primer that is silicone free. So I've had that sitting for about 10 minutes. And what I've been loving are these double duty super skin, or sorry, the super serum skin tint. This is SPF 40. And this is everything you guys this is for foundation your spf your skincare nourishment all of it in a serum oil combination it's just absolutely beautiful and this has had almost fourteen thousand reviews on their website and i'm telling you fantastic i should have tried this before it came out i was about two years late to the party but i gotta tell you especially if you're over 45 you want medium coverage during the summer but you don't want to feel gunky and layered you're gonna love this stuff so basically it is an award-winning clean t skin tint light coverage skincare ingredients mineral spf with a dewy finish that looks and feels alive it improves the look of dryness blemishes redness wrinkles uneven skin tone over time that's a big claim but it can live up to that claim because the skincare ingredients in here squalene uh shady butter aloe powder, sodium hyaluronate, which is going to uh, deeply hydrate the skin. It is a little bit, like I said, like a drippy serum oil type of feel. But if you're oily, don't be scared of this. You can definitely powder over this. So what I'm doing is I'm mixing two colors, the Formosa and the Boom Boom. I like to mix colors because I feel that I found that most realistic skincare look when you mix colors. Like one color tends to be flat. So what I like to do with a product like this, so shaker. And then what I like to do, the Formosa. Apply the fingertips. Where is that? This is like skincare. You can do that. You can, kind of, you can apply with fingertips. One light layer to start. Don't want to go crazy and try to get the full coverage on the first. Just get a light layer. And what's so beautiful is that the mineral SPF will be protecting your skin. Now, on the actual website, it talks about how this can replace a lot of your daytime skincare, especially if you're normal combination to oily. You don't need to be layering on a bunch of things. 
you could just do this radiant priming serum to have that under, have that dry down, and it's nice. It's weightless. And then this on top, and you could be done. You could be okay. So as you can see, I've got just a really light base layer on right now. And then I'm going to go in a little bit on some of the areas where I want a little bit of for coverage, like some of these little spots here, that one down here. I'm going to let this kind of dry down for like a minute. Just to attack. You don't have to go crazy. I'm also not a crazy fan of a lot of makeup brushes. I find that a lot of foundation makeup brushes tend to be very dense, very firm, and they tug on the skin and they unnecessarily tug on the skin. Where oftentimes just a light, cooling, super clean beauty blender and your fingers. Really? far superior. I like makeup brushes that are very when you touch them onto the skin. Not something firm that's going to move and tug the skin around when you're applying makeup. And let me show you what I mean. There's a difference between a makeup brush like this. See how it's moving the skin on the back of my hand? Causing unnecessary tugging because the brush There's a difference between a brush like that and a brush like this, that's super soft, that's a little bit more bendy. So the brush is, it's not tugging at the skin. So more often than not, I'm all about clean fingers and clean blending sponges. If you get over 40, over 45 in your 50s and 60s, you don't want to be tugging at your skin every single day when you're putting makeup on. So now I'm taking a little bit more of that super serum skin tint, mixing those two colors, and just going over again the areas where I want just a little bit more coverage. But what's nice about this is it's straight up, it's like skincare. You can go in with your fingers, eye, and suck on my face. I'm not going to be putting concealer on. More often than not, adds more texture and weight underneath the eye, which you don't need if you're over 40. When you look at children, even children have a little bit of darkness underneath the eye. It is actually natural and beautiful and normal. When you're trying to completely obliterate all coloring underneath your eye, it looks matte and weird and flat for the human eye. And that's what makes it look um, fake and cakey. So I embrace a little bit of the darkness I have under there. I can't completely cover it up unless I'm putting super thick theatrical type makeup on underneath that or concealer, whatever, which is what I do not want to do. So that's what's happening around here. Especially when I want to keep things super, super simple. So as you can see, Super light layer of both of these colors mixed all over the base. And then I went in and just applied, went over some of the areas where I wanted a little bit extra coverage. But this is your skincare, this is your PF, and this is your light to medium coverage all in one bottle. This is truly a game changing product, ladies. I have to tell you, it really is. So, what I like to do is after that is on, I just like to let it soak and sink in while I do other things. So let's just do a really quick brow. So I have this cute little L brow lift applicator. What I'm doing these days is just keeping it super simple and I'm doing the Maybelline Express Brow. Actually... Let me get one of my sneeze up here. This is a Scott Barnes 6D brush. The no aren't anymore, but I really love to brush. What I do is rather than comb this all the way through, but at the top here, where I need to be a more dark. the color upward strokes to make it look I'm 
doesn't look like ourselves. It's just super heavy. Somebody in tutorials that you see everywhere. Women are not into that. If you want lighter formulations, softer foundation formulations, especially as you get older. Matte makeup. I'm just totally a brows are dead. Got a little bit of a hard candy eyeshadow primer, which I really love. I could just do a tiny little bit on eye. You know, the barns started I'm showing all these stop barn brushes, which don't sell anymore. But if you can find a little eye fan brush, like These are nice, especially because as we get older, our eyelids tend to be oily and shadow. So this kind of just locks it in place. So think of it as like just a super light face layer. If you didn't want to buy something like this, you can take um, a liquid foundation that you're using and put a tiny little bit on and just sweep that on your eyelid. Once that dries down, it's perfectly fine and helps your eyeshadow to keep you grip old school makeup artist tip which still works. I am right now let me show you guys. Loving this equip prime protein. I know it's random, but I just had to show you this is three ingredients. This is grass fed beef protein, cocoa powder, and stevia. And it is so good. I have been eating carnivore for a little over a month. lost eight pounds and really changed a lot of things i'm sleeping so much better i have so much more energy not a lot of the up and downs for carbs and sugar could be another video if you're interested but this stuff just literally tastes like a chocolate malt so good i made it a little more runny than i usually do today i think i added a little bit too much uh, liquid what i do is i do about a fourth a cup of heavy cream and a little bit of water with ice i like it a little bit thicker almost like a shake but really really good literally a scoop is like 100 calories no carbs that was a tangent so the Ilya Super Serum Skin Tint has been on for about five minutes or so soaked in. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with another product that I am absolutely loving. This is pretty much the powder of life if you are over. This is a left universal translucent powder. This stuff is absolutely amazing, you guys. I'm going to pull up a little bit of info. Basically, it's light, it's never cakey, it helps your makeup adhere longer. You can mattify without dryness. It's ideal for all skin types. You can use it as a primer. After your skincare, you can just use a very soft puff or soft makeup brush and just press it into the skin as a makeup primer and then proceed with your makeup. And then you can also make up with it. It's absolutely incredible. It's oil absorbing base for concealer, foundation, if you want a longevity to your makeup or you want a more matte complexion you could use that as a primer before i've done that and it doesn't leave, it doesn't overly matte the face which is nice you can even sweep it over your eyelids to add eyelid primer i'm not affiliated by the way and i'm really happy that i purchased the olaf powder brush to go with because i find that this is it's a vegan super soft synthetic brush and it's gorgeous for setting makeup I'm not going to set just yet. Actually, I, I need to because today I'm going to use um, a powder bronzer and powder blush. But if I was using cream bronzer or cream blush, I would do that first before setting with this. Let's go ahead and set with it. This is a refillable powder. Beautiful. So what I'm going to do is I'm pressing the brush into the powder. Gently tapping. And so as not to just disturb my layer of light skin tint underneath, the first thing I do is I go in and I just press that into the skin to go ahead and that first layer. 
Because if you start going like this, all you're going to do disturb that base underneath, which is what you do not. So in this sense, you can use a makeup brush like a velour puff. And then what I like to do is pointy your part and go right under the eye. But it's tough when you're over 40 because when you use concealers and you don't set with a lightweight powder underneath your eye, the, the concealers look cakey and they slide around all day. But then putting a powder on underneath your eye when you're over 40 either because it just looks cakey and gross. But this powder, so unbelievably light. It almost feels like lightweight and silicone-y, but it just completely meshes in to the skin with like a second skin that some of these ingredients are on this powder. It's like crazy. It's got cellulose for oil absorbing and a blurring effect, squalene to moisturize and nourish, rice extract to guard against environmental pollutants, um, and then this Orella seed extra. That was a new one for me. I had to look that up. But Aleph is claiming that this will decrease your sebaceous gland activity, decrease your pore size, maintain skin hydration, and mattify the skin. All of the ingredients are absolutely super, super clean, but of course, calc free, of course. Again, why I love this powder in combination with their brush is because this brush does not pull and drag on the skin. It is dense enough to feel like it's covering enough surface area, but it's not pulling and tugging on my face as I am using it. But again, you'll notice I'm not really going like this. I'm blotting and setting, almost as if I'm using like a puff on my face. Press and dab all over, and that's what you're setting your base. I just absolutely adore that brush and this powder combination. This is such a beautiful powder for a mature skin type, or if you have skin texture, if you have larger pores, it doesn't settle. It doesn't look like a powdery cake face. It just looks like really luminous, gorgeous skin. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Trish McAvoy perfect bronzer color here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, again, a spot for a brush, which I don't even think they sell anymore, but get yourself a tapered Super soft, loose powder brush like this. When it brushes should bend when they touch your skin so that they don't pull or drag. A little bit of brush, a little bit of brush, a little bit of bronzer. Wake the face up, and remember, bronzer is not called for. Bronzer is the look of warmth. So the sun hits us here, the sun hits us here, side of the nose, can go a little bit. There's like the warms. Bronzer is just a bit of light. All bronzer is. And let's keep this super easy. A fluffy eyeshadow brush. Take the bronzer. And literally shade. Try not to do too much of a windshield wiper motion, especially on an over 40, 45 ish eye. You don't want to go downward on the eye and pull the eye down. I just usually pick a high point. You can do a little bit. Again, let's keep it super simple. I find talking to my clients, especially if they're 50 and over, some aren't using a lot of eyeshadow. You don't really need a lot of eyeshadow. You just need a little bit of a lining. And as you get older, especially if you have hooded eyes, you have to go higher to lift the eye. But oh, eyeshadow, a lot of us, when we're older, we don't have large lid space anymore to work with lots of shadows. Not a lot of real estate to work with. 
stuff you just go higher up onto your brow bone with your finishing color, you'll be good. That is the perfect bronzer from Trisha McAvoy. And I have used uh, the top of my forehead, high points of my cheeks in here, and on the side of the nose. So that's the perfect bronze. And then I'm going to mix two colors. This is the pink glow, and this is the coral blush, also from Trisha McAvoy. And I'm going to take, I'm going to take my LF powder brush. your blush relatively high on your cheek don't blushing in a stripe or don't don't go too far underneath your eye though because it is going to start catching and collecting and air need a little bit of lip balm and i should have told you guys that putting on a nice balm at the beginning of your makeup routine it is really good to do because it'll have time to sink in as you're working i love these ones from prime primarily pure this is the coco one oh fake is on looking good and then now i just have an eye pencil here from trish mcavoy this is the intense gel eyeliner pencil which i absolutely love in deep aubergine and I'm going to get my close-up mirror here because I need what I do. Right from the pencil. And I just try to match it down my eyelash. I'm not doing cat eyes going up off to the side. You can if you want, but I basically stop on the inner corner where my eyelashes stop. And I stop on the outer corner of the eye where the eyelashes are. And if you do a fine enough light line, you don't even have to blend that in because you have added more intense uh, depth to your eyelashes because that's what eyeliner is supposed to do. Keep looking here and there. I'm getting used to this new camera. That's what eyeliner is supposed to do. Create the illusion of a thicker, fuller lash, not hello and morning eyeliner. It's going for beautiful natural beauty look so eyeliner is on i have my beloved shiseido eye lash curler and then my latest loving is the christian dior your show they're brown love brown as you get older softer you'll get really pretty depth and definition but all makeup artists that have been doing makeup for years tell you things that you won't necessarily viral tiktoker people and that's because I went to makeup school back in 2000 and learn the way that Hollywood makeup artists were trained do what they do or what they have done. And technically what you're supposed to do for a beautiful natural beauty look is if you're wearing black eyeliner, you mascara. And if you're using brown eyeliner, you should be using brown mascara because the idea is to make it look like you've got beautiful full brown glasses and when you're using black mascara with a brown eyeliner the eye catches it and it does look a little more fake. so that brown your show mascara i do remember when i was younger using this brush liking it a little bit more it's a big fat brush that you'd have to take off Excess when you're putting it on. What I found as I get older, I don't know if my eyes and features are shrinking, but I notice that the brush is a little bit too big. You just got to be careful with it and wipe off from the brush. Otherwise, you'll get it all along your eyelash. Beautiful. 
blue moon mascara it doesn't crease or no crease it doesn't smudge I like it. so i did that first eye i'm doing the second and then i go back without dipping the brush back in and see this side's kind of dried slightly and i'm just going and i'm combing any clumpies out for a nice second coat that doesn't look thick and creamy. And then I'll go back. Second eye. Blending. Soft. So these look like soft, beautiful, fluffy, brown lashes. Natural. Black mascara is beautiful when you're younger. Or you're going out and you want real drama but black mascara every single day unless that's your thing but i'm trying to teach you guys from the point of view of someone who is a little older much draw beauty and you want to look softer a lot of times if you look softer in your makeup application sure it looks more natural. And I'm not going to say anti-aging because I don't like to say anti-aging. I've heard people say pro-age or well-age. And it's true. You can't fight aging. Aging is going to happen to all of us. But you can just yeah, change your techniques, especially as you get older and tweak them so that you can look really... Oh, I got mascara all over my fingers. So you can look really pretty and polished without looking severe. So, and then also what I like to do sometimes is I like to take a dampened beauty blender that's not wet. You don't want it wet or drippy. And I'll dip it into my powder and do another little light layer of this LF right in the teaser. Because I get a little shiny in my teaser. Okay. Years of being an oily skin person has really benefited me in the sense that I think I matured pretty well. Now, no concealer underneath the eye. I don't want it. I have a little bit of darkness under there. I'm fine with it. I am fine with it. Now, I do have some concealers that I think are okay. I don't think I've found a holy grail concealer as of yet. I, te I technically prefer to put my foundation products underneath my eye to give me a little bit of brightness evening out under there without it looking... Um, also, I think um a lot. So with the Aleph powder, if you get smudgy or you hot flash a lot and you get oily eyelids and oily underneath your eye and you find it like your mascara is smudging all under there or eyeliner or whatever, get yourself a little brush like this. This is the Japan S. You have a number. It's from Japan S. And you can take a little bit of this Aleph and just tap and press so you really get targeted under there. And you'll note it on in with what two or three layers on some parts of my face with this powder no texture you guys it's absolutely so beautiful and incredible if you are over 40 you need this powder in your life i traveled with this to california but to anaheim to disneyland and i used it as my primer and i used it as my setting and blotting powder throughout the day if i needed it and i'm telling you no sure and it wasn't mattified. It didn't look dull or flat. It was just absolutely beautiful. And I can take this little guy and just go. I don't like to put powder right in the middle here. I like a little bit of a sheen. Um, that's an old school makeup artist trick where if you completely mattify and powder your nose, it looks dead and dull to the naked eye. So that's what your eye registers as heavy makeup looking fake. But if you can keep a little bit of a sheen, like a lot of influencers and people on YouTube will put like a highlighter there. But that kind of looks unnatural too because not everyone's nose is glistening right here in the middle like a disco ball. But if you just leave it alone and don't powder right there, it just registers that way to the eye and it looks like game which is nice. Okay, so let's do lips. So I've been loving all of these uh, LA Girl Perfect Precision Lip Liners. I got this one at Tardy, and this one is the color Bear. Absolutely love all of their colors. They have more of them. This one is called 
sugar and spice. This one is a little bit more of a rosy brown, but this one's more of a straight brown. Three or four of these all over. I've got a few in my office, a couple in my purse. They're so inexpensive. I was going to say cheap, but they're not cheap. It's a beautiful, elegant pencil that is relatively inexpensive, but gives beautiful color. What I like to do when I am lining the lid is I go a little bit underneath on the bottom. So a little bit outside of your natural lip line on the bottom. And I stop here. When you're over a certain age, do not continue to line all the way to the corner. That's how you get that yucky buildup gunkiness. That And I like to use the side of the pencil. That creates a soft line too. You can get any type of beautiful, nude, natural looking lit pencil. And it'll go with any color you have. You don't have to match your lip color with your lipstick. The only time I would recommend doing that is if you're using a really bold color. And you want to get really precise with, say, a red or a deep, intense, mauve, berry type color. But even then, you could use a pencil line. As you can see, when I'm lining with the side of the pencil, I'm actually also filling in a little bit with some colors. Okay. So again, on the top as on the bottom, don't go all the way down into the corner. And now... Because I have that cocoa lip balm underneath. It's all marrying together looking beautiful. And then we'll go with the lipstick. Where is my lipstick? Ah, here it is. I love Makeup by Mario lipstick. This is the Ultra Suede color in Brielle. New lip colors are tricky because if you get something that's too brown for your skin tone, you're going to look dead. And if you get something... Like, I can't want to do this. And if you get something that's too pinky, it's not going to look nude. You have to experiment and find the right pinky nude for you. But what I love about these Ultra Suede Makeup, Mar Makeup by Mario lipsticks is that it's a more matte without being dull and flat and drying. And actually, I don't know why I'm being all fancy with my lip brush. I like to do that sometimes. But you can even just go straight from the lipstick bullet. That is such a gorgeous formula. The only thing, and uh, the packaging is beautiful, magnet, nice and heavy. The only thing I've noticed with these Makeup by Mario's is that they tend to... So when you're, if you're going to apply from the bullet with this one, don't... Put it at high or even highish and put it on because it'll it'll move. But oh well, it's what we gotta deal with for a beautiful color. And if your bullet kind of cracks and starts moving, then of course get yourself a lip brush so that you can without kind of moving that bullet and making it more loose. But that is it. That is what I am doing these days. Using multitasking products like the Super Serum Skin Tint from Ilia, the True Skin Radiant Firming Primer, Silicone Free, I love it, and this Ala Prep Finish Powder married with their brush. It's absolutely fantastic. I will link as many of these products as I can in the description. I'll take each in my Amazon store. And I'll maybe make five cents if you make a purchase. Not affiliated with any of them, but just linking them on my Am in my Amazon store. I don't believe a lot is available through Amazon, so you have to go to their website to purchase the product. And I think if you sign up for their email list, you can get 10%. The powder itself is refillable. So once you're finished with this, you don't have to purchase the whole shebang. You can just get the refill. But I've been using this powder religiously for almost two months, and I haven't even hit pan or made a dent. It is truly mind-boggling powder. That's not really a powder. It's just insane. Let me go ahead and do something with this hair. You like my don't stop believing? 
in Victoria, Canada. Isn't it cute? I'll be back for the skincare. Here we are. Simple, natural, soft, focused, over 40 makeup, hybrid products using gorgeous, un or not in that, beautiful, hydrating, soft, focused powders. My skin still looks like skin. If you are interested in any of the products, I will link them below. If you want to see more tutorials like this, just stuff that is kind of just, again, soft, beautiful, natural makeup. People are going to look at you and tell you, you look beautiful, not your makeup. So hope you enjoyed this, you guys. I'll talk to you soon.